Good evening, everybody, and welcome to East Leak Academy's virtual open evening. Uh, this is our first ever virtual open evening um, due to obviously uh, some quite difficult times at the moment. Um, and it's a shame that we couldn't get everybody into the school um, to do this uh, face to face. So please bear with us. This is a brand new uh, live system that we're using this evening. Um, and we've uh, we've piloted it. We've done a few tests, but on every test we seem to have had a slightly different technical issue. Um, so please bear with us. And if we do get any technical issues, we'll try and work through those together. Um, there will be a question and answer session this evening, which will follow this presentation. Um, and we'll tell you when you can kind of start to uh, give us some questions and we'll do our best to answer those questions as we work our way through. Um, so again, big warm welcome from all of us at East Lake Academy and I can see the, the attendee numbers are, are still going up slightly. So we're going to make a start now into the presentation. So if the, uh, if, if the slideshow can be moved on to the next screen, please. So I guess choosing a secondary school is a really big decision for any uh, any young person and any parents. Um, and we think it's really, uh, really important for a school to have a real clear sense of where it's going, a real clear sense of its vision, what it's about. So it's its mission, what they're what we're trying to achieve on a on a daily basis. And then at the centre of that, what are the what the values like at the school? What's it like to attend that school on a daily basis and what things are important to that school? Um, and we, we've got really a real clear sense of that as a school, we certainly feel. And you can see there by reading on the screen um, what our mission, vision and values are. Um, for us, we're here to do more than just achieve grades at the end of a school experience. It's about really investing in young people and their families to try and help them to be the very best they can be. Uh, and centered around that are our four core values. So if we can move on to the next slide for me. So what are our core values? What is our ethos as a school? Well, we center that around four key things and that's teamwork, commitment, growth and respect. And we expect these to be displayed by uh, first and foremost, our students on a daily basis, but certainly from our staff and uh, we expect that from our parents as well. So we talk about these four core pillars throughout everything that we do in school and they're integrated within our wider curriculum through our pastoral system uh, and really, really focusing in on those four things that we believe are kind of key behaviours that will help people to be successful uh, beyond school life and into the future. If we move on to the next slide for me. So central to any uh, academy or school is the quality of education. What types of things are going to go on and how is that going to work in a school? Um, well, really centred behind that is key expertise and specialism from staff. So our staff are absolutely passionate and committed. Uh, we have exceptional retention rates so our staff are happy and like working at the school and tend to stay with us for a long period of time and that gives a real stability to that quality of education um, and we have a really ambitious curriculum uh, which is really broad and i'm going to talk more about that in a second but really it's about giving students the opportunity to learn in their lessons and beyond across the whole school and part of that is how we work with parents and have a real partnership to have that journey together to support our young people on moving through that journey in the school. If we move on to the next slide for me. So talking about curriculum, what does it look like at East Lake Academy? So I would say that there are many schools over over the last uh, kind of 10, 10 years that have really quite narrowed their curriculum. So they focus in too, maybe perhaps too much on just the core subjects and they've kind of lost what's really important in education, which is that breadth and depth behind the curriculum. And that's something that we've never uh, done to it to a lot, never done to, uh, to, to too much at Eastleigh Academy. But what we made the decision at the uh, at last year was to really broaden our curriculum further. So we've given more airtime to some of our creative subjects like uh, music, performing arts, uh, physical education, art, 
uh, and design and technology to make sure that our students get that breadth of experience as they come through the school. So at Key Stage 3 in September this year, our students are studying more creative subjects than they ever have done before in my time at the school, which is over 11 years. So we're really excited about that curriculum journey to make sure that students get that broad, balanced experience as they go through the school but still centred around that is uh, at the core of our curriculum is are those academic subjects which uh, our students excel in just as much as the creative subjects. So if we move on to the next slide. So what's it like in terms of the feel around our academy? Well, I said in our kind of promotional video that it's a really nice feel to our academy. It's the kind of place you walk into and it just feels like a really nice environment to be. And we centre our behaviour and attitudes around three simple rules, which is be safe, be respectful, be responsible. All of our students understand those rules and they can reel them off uh, day in, day out. Every single lesson ends with be safe, be respectful, be responsible to remind our uh, students exactly what their expectations are in the academy. But for us, it's about not just about compliance, it's about our students taking responsibility and managing their behaviour, which we think our students do really, really well. And as I said, a calm, purposeful learning environment is absolutely essential to students doing well within their studies. Moving on. So personal development, as I said at the start, school should be more, more than just about uh, a set of qualifications at the end. Uh, and ESA Academy has loads and loads of opportunities for our students to develop that broader, uh, well-rounded students uh, as they work through. So our extracurricular offer is varied. It's really uh, kind of designed to give lots of opportunities, not just in sport, but in academic subjects uh, right across the board. And linking in with that is our house system, which we have a full programme of competitions throughout the year in all different subject areas, really giving students the opportunity to broaden their, uh, their, their experience in the school. And central to that is really making students think about what are some of the qualities that are going to be really important to them in future life. So thinking about leadership, helping out others, and then from year seven right the way through to year 13 on that seven year journey through the school and hopefully into the sick form, we provide a really, really structured careers education programme to get young people thinking, thinking about their future uh, from the minute they step foot in the academy. And that can really help to give students a focus within their studies as they move through the school. Moving on. So I guess central to a school as well is you want to know that your child's going to be well looked after. So what does care and support look like in the academy? Well, I think we've got a really compassionate heart at the centre of the academy. Uh, we invest heavily in our pastoral support. So we uh, have a full time student counsellor, for example. We have uh, behaviour mentors that work with students. We have uh, really well trained tutors that can have that daily contact with with our students. Uh, so that if there's any issues or a student needs extra support, they get it. And we really, really just want to have not just uh, I kind of talked about our behaviour expectations earlier, uh, uh, you know, some really clear expectations that make a calm and purposeful environment for our students, but a real compassionate heart to the way we uh, interact with our students as well. So I think we've got incredibly uh, caring leadership within the school and all of our pastoral leaders are trained to designated safeguarding lead status so that they can understand the key issues for young people and get to the, the heart of those uh, and help young people when they need it. So I think it's a, it's an area that the academy certainly uh, is, is, is well supported in and definitely, um, definitely a, a strength. Moving on. So if your child requires additional support, uh, we have a very proactive inclusion faculty at Eastleigh Academy. Uh, we've put some information up there so that you can go to our website and find out exactly what our core offer is for students with special educational needs or disabilities. Um, and there will be the core offer there, which shows what, uh, what students can access. There's a graduated response and local offer uh, or local authority offer 
on that web page as well. And if you do want additional information about uh, SEND, please visit the website and look at that page. And what we'll do later on as well is give you the opportunity to ask some questions if you need to around that. And we have Mr. Jones, who's our SENCO on the call this evening. Moving on. So our students, what do they look like? Well, you're going to hear from some of them later because we've got some on the call with us this evening. But I think our students really, as they go through the school, just become really great citizens. They become well-rounded individuals and we try to install through the values, through our expectations, a real kind of moral core to our students. Uh, and hopefully they go on out into the, the wider world when they leave us to be great citizens that really help out within their local community. Um, so not only do they get great qualifications at the end of their journey with us, but we want them to be really thinking about that next step. Where do they go beyond? and how do they then make an impact in society when they leave us? Next slide, please. Central to choosing a school, a secondary school, is what, what are the staff about? Um, and I think we've I've already touched on this, have really kind of visible leadership, really uh, willing to listen and take on board feedback and to engage with parents and young people. But I think passion really comes across. When I walk the school, which I do at least twice a day, walk around the school and see what's going on in lessons, I see absolutely passionate teachers, really infused uh, and really kind of just, just loving teaching their subject and giving that knowledge to our students. As well as that, you'll know that we're part of uh, a larger group of schools called the Diverse Academies Trust and we do lots of collaboration within that trust where we can share good practice and we can uh, learn from each other. So that kind of collaboration is central to helping our staff to develop. We invest heavily in staff development, so uh, more and more so based around kind of what goes on in our core offer of quality of education in the classroom. And I think that our staff, again, as I've said, very high retention rates and love working at the school. And I think that passion comes across on a daily basis. Next slide. So we're gonna have an opportunity to meet our students. Now we've got some students who've managed to get onto the call. We've had a slight technical issue with, uh, with two of the younger students. So then we're actually gonna try and get them on speakerphone and speak to them. Um, and I'm gonna ask them some questions and they're gonna tell uh, your, your children what it's like to study at East Lake Academy. Um, so I'm going to go to Brody first, if possible. And I think at this point as well, this is when the, the question and answers will go live as well. So if you do have some questions for us, there's a question and answer kind of slot up at the top, the top corner. I can't remember which side it is. Um, if you click on the, the ask a question function, you can start to feed some of your questions through to us and we'll have a go at answering them in a second. So. That's being moderated. So I'm going to go to Brody. Have we got Brody on the line? Mr. Jones, have we got Brody? Yes, we're just there. Uh, it's just coming onto the phone line now. Okay, Brody, can you can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Brody, what's it been like joining? So you're in you're in year seven, aren't you, Brody? So far, my personal experiences have been great. Okay. Uh, uh, yes. So what's, what's been great about it? So far, what's been great about my year is that everything's just that little. Yeah. yeah. Some feedback there, and yeah, it seems sorry. to be uh, seems to be like an echo. It's the time delay, I think, on the um, on the call. The call. So I think thank. So thank you for that. We heard from Brody that his time had been great so far. Probably going to have to uh, move away from the speakerphone uh, idea, and we'll go <laughs> to uh, Taylor, who's in year eleven. So if we can cue Taylor in, who has managed to join the call with us this evening, although uh, it's got slightly darker outside, so we're <laughs> struggling for light to see Taylor. 
Um, Taylor, talk to us. So you joined us in year seven and you've gone right the way through the school now into year uh, 11. So talk to us about, about your journey. So I moved from Scotland to England in the summer between year six and year seven. So when I, for this first, so my first day in year seven, I was actually really worried because I, I didn't know what to expect. But then I started meeting new friends and at the end of the first day, I was no longer scared, but then I ended up being really excited for the next day. OK, and so carry on. Talk to us a bit more about your, your kind of your time at East Lake. Well, I ended up getting, I was really welcomed into it and it just made me become more confident as a person. And then after the five years, I've been able to be really confident. And that's, yeah, I'm really grateful for that. OK, so I remember I taught you in year seven, Taylor. Um, was it all plain sailing or did you have to get some support to work your way through the school and to, to get to where you are now? What Talk to us about that, because I think you didn't always have it that easy, did you? Yeah, the first two years I did struggle a bit um, with friendship groups or like stuff like that. But and then after a while, I found where I should be and then I was able to progress from there. Yeah, and I think that that for me, that growth in you as a student and as a young person has been really evident in your journey through the school. We're really proud of you doing that. And I think that, that it kind of that journey through the school for you has been a really positive experience from maybe struggling to then kind of finding your feet and, and getting on. That's quite an important message for anybody who's worried coming up, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. OK. Is there anything else about the about the teaching staff, about how, how you feel supported? Talk to me about what lessons are like. Well, when I was struggling, like back in earlier years, I spoke to the SLT members back then and they really helped me because they helped me decide where I should be and to like help me like focus more on the work and see who, who I was really. And then they, they really helped me, they talked to me and yeah, they were just really good. Okay, thanks for that, Taylor. Um, if we go to Joey now, who's also in year 11, but Joey joined us midway through uh, for his kind of school journey. So Jerry, talk to us about your uh, kind of how you came to the school, what that was like. Well, I, I grew up in England, as I think you can all tell with the accent, but I, I lived in America for a bit. So for, for a lot of my, especially all my secondary school years, I'd never been to an English secondary school. But then I joined this school and I have to say, like to, I was really nervous joining. I, I didn't know where anything was. And I was probably unsure about the system, just the way that some of those listening will be. But I have to say, I, when I joined, the, the staff really helpful because I, I haven't been to a school like this where you can have a relationship with the staff where you can ask questions. They'll always go out of your way to help you, which I think is a really key point. You never feel like you're making a nuisance or you're wasting their time. So I think you can always ask for help in the school. OK, and uh, talk to me about lessons. What's it like? What, what are the teaching staff like? I, I really enjoy lessons here. I think uh, here it's it, hard work gets rewarded. I think if you pay attention to lessons, you do the homework, you'll end up you'll end up succeeding here at East Yeah, everyone has an opportunity to do well here, and you just you just have to take it. Okay. I'm gonna. Is, you, is your mum there with you, Joey? She is. Yes. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to bring a parent in at this point as well. So um, talk to us from a from a parent's perspective. Uh, what's been your kind of observations of the school? Yeah, I think the transition for, we have two children that joined the school. Um, the transition was fantastic. We, there's always going to be little glitches and things you're concerned about, but we felt listened to. Um, as you know, Mr. Francis, we came up, we spoke with you um, and we sorted out anything. The kids have been so happy, which is my main thing as a parent. Yes, I'm really into them doing well academically and they absolutely can and are doing that there. But for the for me, if they're happy and they can succeed, um, that's the main thing. And um, the staff seem vibrant. Um, we've been to a lot of schools, the children have been to many, and they have a good relationship with the staff. They're supported, um, they're looked after. There's excellent communication from the school to home, which we love. Um, it's online, I work full time, so as my husband, we're really busy as a family, but I never feel out of the loop of school. I feel like I can go on in my own time, find out what's going on. We get weekly reports now on their homework, which is also fantastic. So it's communication for me is key child happiness and um, as a parent I'm really really happy with the, with the school. Well thank you very much and I think that's a really key 
important message, isn't it? That, that if your child's happy within a within a kind of a, anything that they do, then they're going to do much better um, than it, than if they're not. So um, thank you very much for your time, uh, Jerry and Taylor. Anything more that you want to add, or uh, if if not, we'll move on to some of the questions from parents. But Jerry, Taylor, any final thoughts? I just say overall, I really enjoy going to the school. I think sometimes you might not wake up, you might not go, to, might not want to go to school, but I really enjoy. So when I wake up, I'm never dreading school. I'm always looking forward to it, seeing my peers and doing well in lessons. Okay, excellent. And Taylor, any final thoughts? Well, I think you're still on mute. No, it's basically the same. Yeah, same as Joey. I'm just looking forward to it, to be honest. Okay. Thank you very much. Right, so, so we're going to go over to some some question and answers uh, for the for this evening. So we've got some questions that uh, hopefully are going to come through, and I can see we've got some some published questions. So, Mr. Francis, the first mm. key question is around admissions. So, obviously, how to apply? How difficult is it to get a place when you live outside of the catchment area? And what do you do when you have one child that attends your school and her sister is potentially looking for a place, but they're also out of the catchment area? OK, so we have um, so to, first first and foremost, the application process is to apply to the local authority where you live. So if you live in Nottinghamshire, you apply to Nottinghamshire County Council and you'll find the information through their, their website. If you live in Nottingham City, you apply through the city. If you live in Leicestershire, Derbyshire, because we take from quite a broad catchment area, then you apply through your, your relevant local authority. The application deadline is the 31st of October. Uh, I believe you can change your applications up until the, uh, up until the point of, um, of kind of when it when it when the uh, the process finishes so if you if you have changed your mind and, and easily academy is now the place that that you want to send your child to then we'd encourage you to do that um we have a, a, a pupil admission number of 210 um we are getting closer to that 210 uh, year on year we've had in the last couple of years one year where we were oversubscribed but by the time the uh, September kind of came around, some of those parents who had accepted or who, who had applied as first choice took up places in private schools, for example, and therefore a few dropped off and, and everybody got in. So uh, I would encourage you to apply and put, put Easley Academy as first choice. If you do already have a sibling at the school, then you'll be uh, obviously it's, it's kind of within catchment first. And then there's a, a set of criteria for oversubscription or for uh, looking at who then gets the places. And if you look in our admissions policy, you'll see that criteria and having a sibling puts you slightly higher on that list than not. So uh, again, check the, the, the oversubscription criteria within that, uh, within that document, which can be found on our website and you'll see where, where you sit with that. But I think um, there's a, a very good chance that, that students who apply to Eastleigh Academy will, will get a place um, so we would encourage you to put, put that down as a first choice offer. So the second question, Mr Francis, is around clubs and extracurricular. So we have parents asking if there are singing groups and if there are technology clubs. Yep, so we've got um, we've got choirs, we've got music groups, um, we've got bands. And what was the other the other question? Uh, around technology, anything yeah. to do with engineering and technology? Yeah, so there, there's, there's clubs in every single faculty. So we have an extracurricular program that's published. It's been slightly restricted this year because of the situation we find ourselves in with, with COVID, but still uh, staff are looking to be proactive with that and looking to be creative with how they offer some of those. So even some of those clubs are continuing through uh, the kind of the using, using the technology. So I know faculties are running uh, a writer's club, which is kind of a mixed year group through uh, Microsoft Teams, for example. So trying to, to offer as much as we can, but there are clubs across every single subject and our staff are really proactive at offering those opportunities to young people as part of that personal development offer that we spoke about earlier. I do have um, so, so some other panel members this evening. So I've got yes, Dr. So Benskin and I've got Mr Jones as well. So any questions right. that might be relevant to Dr Benskin who's kind of teaching and learning and curriculum lead in the academy or Mr Jones as, as SCND lead, uh, we, we can feed those in as well and we'll get them to answer some questions too. 
So, Mr. Francis, there's a question here for Mr. Jones. Mm -hmm. So, would there be an opportunity for additional transition visits for children with special educational needs and disabilities? Hi there, yeah, absolutely. So, around Easter time onwards, we work with primary schools. Uh, transition is really key, so it's important we build a, a working relationship early on um, and we get extra visits booked in. So we'll, we'll you know, depending on need, book in extra visits. And for me, it's really key that, um, you know, children with additional needs or, you know, children who might be a bit anxious about joining us have that time to visit in quiet times. So, you know, come and explore the school after hours, um, you know, get to explore the, the kind of building and just get used to it. Um, and what we tend to do as well is, is do a pupil profile before uh, your child joins us, just so we can really share that information with teaching staff early on. Um, and it's again, it's really key for me to build links with the primary school. Um, so if you do need any support, do um, go on our website. We've got our information on there and my email address is on there as well. So contact the office or, or email me directly and I'll be happy to book in any extra visits um, around the kind of quiet time, um, usually around Easter onwards. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Mr. Jones, just while you're there, uh, yes. or Mr. Francis. So one question is around, they're looking at the school and it looks very big. Is it easy to navigate to classes? Yeah, I think um, that's one thing that's really, really quite quite good about East Lake Academy is uh, it is a, a large building because we're a large secondary comprehensive school, but we can access the whole building from inside. So at the moment, um, students kind of got their own corridor um, because we've got the, the year group bubbles going on. But in a normal, normal kind of school environment, actually, it's really easy to navigate around the school because uh, the, it, it's just a kind of a within the same building and you're not having to go to lots of different blocks like some schools. Uh, you might be in, in other in other schools. So I would say that students generally get themselves orientated around the school very quickly. It probably takes them a couple of days to get used to, to moving around the school. We do offer, um, the, we have two transition days as well, which we usually run obviously outside of COVID time. So students do get to experience the academy and kind of do a mock day almost before they join us. And then when they join in September, we try and reduce the amount of students in on the first day or so, just given the time to adjust to the building. Um, but we provide maps and there's lots of stuff around to support in those first few days as well. So, yeah. So the next question is for Dr. Benskin. Um, this is around choices of subjects in year seven and the kind of subjects that we offer at East Leak Academy. OK, yeah. so as um, Mr. Francis said, we have a very broad and balanced curriculum um, and the the core subjects take uh, sort of the uh, it's a 25 period week. The core subjects take a, a number of lessons there, but we also offer a language so the students choose before they come here whether they want to do French or German. Um, we have all of the creative subjects, so they will do they will do design technology, they will do music, they will do um, art, they will do drama. So all of those are accessed. There's core PE on the timetable as well, so they get two periods a week of PE. Um, and then they get the humanities subjects as well. So they have geography, history, and they have religion, uh, philosophy and ethics. So it's a full, full uh, spectrum of subjects that, that they then do throughout year seven, eight and nine uh, before they then choose the options as to which ones they want to specialise in at GCSE. Dr. Benskin, just another question from a little more specific. Um, one around offering Spanish potentially, if we offer that. Um, and one around what we do in computer science, see if you are able to answer those. OK, well, uh, we don't offer Spanish as a curriculum subject. We have, however, on occasion had some students come, ha uh, come through that speak that language and then we support that um, in terms of that the, their journey through that curriculum. So we've had students who have taken Spanish GCSE because that's their um, uh, first language. So they've taken that, that as a subject and the school has supported that, but we don't offer it as a, as a language within the school. Um, the computer science, again, computing is part of that curriculum that goes through seven, eight, nine, um, and we do offer computer science at GCSE um, in, as, as one of the options. So again, depending on uptake, we have a cohort of students this year doing computer science um, and, and the, the computing team is a, is a, is a strong team. Thank you, Dr. Benskin. Just while you're there, could you advise of the start and finish times um, and the academy day, please? 
Yeah, so the academy day starts at 8.30 in the morning. Um, we have, uh, we, we begin the day with a 20 minute um, uh, personal development uh, period where they have 20 minutes with their tutor and there is a, there is a set programme of that, so it's considered a lesson. Um, and then they have five one hour period, uh, one hour periods, which are two before break, um, two before lunch and then one in the afternoon. And we finish at five past three. Thank you. And a final one, Dr. Benskin. How is the school dealing with diversity and inclusion as part of the curriculum? Well, that's uh, that, that's really sort of coming to the forefront now at the moment. So obviously we're in Black History Month at the moment and uh, across the school, um, faculties are really, really looking at their curriculum at the minute and seeing where they, where they can promote diversity. The, you, if you walk around the school, um, there are many of our displays promote di diversity. Um, we have an L LBGT group within the school as well. So it's, it really is something that, that we do encourage that sort of freedom and, and being able to be open about the, that, that area of diversity. And just one final one for you, I think. Um, could you tell us about homework um, clubs, if you have any of those after school? Yep, um, I mean, the homework is you, club is run by the inclusion team. So I don't know whether Mr Jones wants to speak a little bit more about the actual homework club, but there is a facility for students to, to stay on site after school um, every day. I um, mean, obviously at the moment, because of the COVID situation, we don't we can't have mixed bubbles. Uh, but I don't know, Mr Jones, if you want to say any more about that facility. Yeah. So we're, we're looking at getting it started up again. Um, so basically it's it's run by my TA team. So, that, you know, students have access to some support to talk through homework with them. Um, and they also have access to IT equipment. So if they need any help with that, um, they can stay after school. Um, it usually runs for about 45 minutes after school each day. Um, so we're looking to get that started as soon as possible again. Obviously with the current situation, we've just been mindful of um, mixing bubbles, but you know, if we can uh, allow it, we will get that up and running again. Um, so it is available for students if they need it. I think um, what's key to, to mention there as well is the homework is delivered through Microsoft Teams platform. Uh, so students can message their staff or message the teachers if they need additional support with homework and, and the teachers can, can have a dialogue around uh, how to support. Um, so that, that's a, a key feature as well. And one thing I'll come back to around the, the curriculum uh, and Dr. Benskin talked about um, choosing options in year nine. Um, one thing that was really key to our ethos at East Leak Academy is giving students a very free choice at what type of options they choose at GCSE. So um, you need to be mindful of that and ask schools that question, will my child be given the opportunity to uh, to study the subjects that they love or will they be guided or heavily guided into uh, subjects perhaps that they might succeed better in uh, which might suit the school's uh, position in a performance table for example. So we're very passionate and certainly I am as a leader to, to give students as much uh, choice around their curriculum as possible so that they can go on and study the subjects that they're really passionate about. Thank you Mr Francis, I have another one for you, um, just around the size of classes, general average size of your classes. I mean uh, most, most uh, comprehensive secondary schools now are going to have an average class size of around 30 um, but we have attainment groups and we generally look to to kind of reduce the numbers uh, for for the groups where students maybe need a little bit extra support. Um, one thing is it, that, that's really important to, to mention is that all of the academic research around um, learning and you can you can access that on the Education Endowment Foundation website is that group size has very little impact on on outcomes uh, and actually the quality of what's delivered, the quality of the teacher, um, so the quality of teaching and learning, the subject expertise from the teacher uh, is far more important than group size. So again, if a, if a school is telling you that they've got very low group, very low numbers in groups, just be mindful what what does that look like in terms of how how uh, how you know how well it or what what is the quality of the the quality of education in the classroom, and that's the key thing that you should be looking for when choosing a secondary school. Um, one parent is asking how are pupils um, put into their houses? 
Yeah, so um, generally what we try and do if they've got a sibling in the school is they they, they generally kind of we, we try to place them in the, the same house that they've kind of got that family connection to. So how sometimes we, we, we decide against that, but that's decided a, a kind of transition. We have a, a, a transition lead who looks at all of the students, speaks to um, the primary schools and gathers lots of information. And we generally try and kind of balance the students across so, so that we don't have uh, all of the, the the people who are who are kind of at primary school have been really interested in sport and might take that passion through. We try and distribute some of them across the different houses. So we, we kind of take all of that information about the young people and try and balance the houses as best we can so that we've got a, a really kind of diverse mix of young people within each house. And then a question about behaviour. So one parent said the child is quite nervous about being bullied at secondary school. So how do we manage um, and try to prevent bullying at the academy? Well, I think, yes, that comes down to the culture in the academy. And we, we've talked a lot about uh, looking at a kind of a, a values led uh, ethos within the school. Um, all of those kind of topics are covered within our pastoral programme. Um, we, as I said earlier, we've got all of our pastoral leaders or heads of year, as, as they might be more commonly known, uh, are designated safeguard lead trained. Uh, they are fully aware of all the issues around um, kind of uh, the, the risk factors to look for in, in, in children presenting who might be, be being bullied. Um, I guess coming to perhaps Taylor might be uh, a good option here if she's still on the call. Taylor, uh, as a student, um, if you've it's, it's getting darker and darker in your in your house um have you experienced anything like that and how has it been dealt with by the school what what are your observations of that i have dealt with stuff like that especially when i was in year seven but i went when i was like upset or anything i just went straight to a teacher and then they were able to sort it out for me okay. so it, it was pretty easy and then they they helped me throughout it and did you feel listened to with <clears> the issue yeah, they were really considerate about it because um, they didn't really understand. But then the more I said about it, they were yeah more understanding. OK, um, and so I guess it's down to us as a school to really unpick um, what's happening for that young person and to provide the support for them. Um, and that's that's kind of looking at it not just as, as a one off incident or that or that that kind of uh, that thing that's happened in that moment in time but what else is going on beyond that that might have led to a breakdown in relationships between students uh, obviously partnership with parents is, is key to that as well um, we can use the blunt instruments of, of sanctions and, and etc but from my experience the uh, the certainty of a sanction is far more uh, kind of far mu much more of a deterrent than than the severity of a sanction and and young people knowing that we will always deal with things and I think that's what what students often say to me is um, and this comes through from student voice uh, when we when we regularly do student voice in the school is that incidents happen uh, you know we know that that young people make mistakes and and they'll at times fall out and that they'll be unpleasant to each other but what our students say is it's always dealt with and we always you know come come to it and we never ignore it and i think that's that's the key thing for me as long based alongside a really uh structured pastoral program that's centered around key core values and just encouraging young people to be lovely young people and to, to treat people with respect So we just have a question here about sports. So what kind of sports do we provide at the school and if we do competitive sports against other schools? Yeah, so we have a full extracurricular programme uh, for, as a PE teacher originally by trade. I'm very passionate about making sure that the, the, the PE faculty continue to focus on uh, a, a wide range of sports. So we have uh, competitive sports um, clubs and we, we, we compete against other schools in uh, netball, um, uh, football, rugby, uh, hockey, uh, gymnastics. So the, the, there's, you know, our, our, our uh, the, the P department are very proactive, always looking to to offer as much as they can. Um, and we can have students that go on to compete um, at local, national and international level as well. And we're, we're really uh, keen to support young people in their kind of 
pathways into sport for the future as well. So we have um, young people who go out for day release to professional sports teams or clubs or on elite uh, elite performance pathways. Um, and we, we would look to integrate that within their studies and to support those those pathways for young people. So a question for Mr Jones um, yes. here. This is regarding um, if whether any of our staff are trained specifically for mental health issues to support pupils, for example, our counselling service. Yes, yeah, sure. So um, all of our staff have offered to a, a quite a comprehensive CPD package, so um, they can always um, access courses online. Um, but we do also have guest speakers coming in as well. So we work with the local authority um, to make sure that staff have relevant training and are up to date. Um, we also um, have our full time counsellor who works with Young Minds um, and we work with local services as well. So any students that we have any concerns about, uh, we make sure the appropriate referrals are made. Um, and again, that comes down to the, the strong pastoral system as well. So it is really about us knowing students, knowing those signs and offering that support and building relationships. So I think, you know, I'd like to think any student is comfortable to come and speak to us when they need some support. Obviously, with the um, COVID situation as well, um, we've had um, the recovery curriculum, so our priority was getting students back in and feeling safe again. Um, we all know that students need to feel safe to learn, so it was really important for us to, to recognise that and make sure that all students were able to come back feeling safe, supported, um, and then we look at getting that recovery back in after the lockdown period. And a final question for Dr Benskin, I think, is how are the children split on entry to the school and when does the school split children academically? OK, so um, we do uh, in maths, English and science, there is some setting that, that occurs fairly early on. So in year seven, um, we split the, the, the group into two year halves, so A and B, um, and the those year halves are, are setted for maths and science in year seven. Um, obviously, this year we've not had key stage two data, so we have we, we're teaching all groups in mixed ability and it may be that we actually choose to do that next year. Um, the rest of the cohort, um, the, re the rest of the curriculum, so across all the other subjects and English, they're, they're taught in mixed ability groups in those two year halves. As we move into sort of year eight, again, the English then begins to take on some settings. So we do a little bit of setting across the three core subjects, um, but other groups are still taught in mixed ability. Um, and the the uh, non mixed, the, the other subjects do not really look, look at uh, setting until we get into sort of year nine and GCSE. Um, and even then, as we, as we go into option subjects in year 10 and 11, they're taught in mixed ability based on their options um, and then set it in, in the core sciences, in the core subjects in maths, English and science. Thank you. And I think given the time, Mr Francis, the last question, uh, probably an apt one. So around the COVID restrictions, how would, um, how would students continue to work remotely? And obviously we had a quick uh, a trip, a question around the trips and residentials we normally run and what we would normally do there. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, trips and residentials, we we run a full programme of trips and uh, residentials from uh, just local trips going out into kind of local providers through to international trips. Um, we actually had a trip planned to, to go to Sumatra to do some conservation with the orangutans um, in April and October, which unfortunately had to be had to be cancelled um, due to due to COVID. But we've been out to to uh, to Ghana, to Africa to help uh, build an orphanage uh, over several projects. Uh, we do trips in languages. Um, sports trips, etc. So there's a, there's a range of opportunities for young people to get involved in. Um, th so that was the trip side of it. Just remind me of what the other the other question was. Around in the continuing case of COVID nineteen, how we yeah, support yeah. remote work, remote learning. So remote learning uh, for us has been a journey because we started off uh, setting work through our old kind of homework system, which was called Insight, but there was no interaction back between staff and students. We quickly transitioned uh, kind of beyond Easter onto Microsoft Teams and we had some staff who uh, worked as kind of Teams champions and, and really kind of pioneered that work to to help make it a more interactive experience for students. So we offer uh, or have offered and continue to offer uh, a blended learning approach. So 
Um, I think what's, what I've really picked up from kind of going through the ro remote learning journey is the polarised opinions of parents, which kind of uh, one parent wants everything to be kind of streamed live and delivered live, whereas another parent kind of says, I, we hate live lessons and we want it all to be set uh, for our students to do independently. So we think that the, a real blended mix is the way forward. So to have some live content delivered by staff in real time and to, to kind of introduce new new concepts and new new material, uh, as well as independent study work. And, and I would argue that, that schools that just do purely the, the live content actually are, are reducing the study skills of the of the young people that they work with. And it's probably an easy option. They could sit on a on a live call and, and be there in, in person, but be very uh, vacant in mind or to, to be concentrating on something else. So our blended learning offer is to, to provide a kind of a, a mix of different styles of learning. Uh, but again, we will, uh, if we have to go into periods of lockdown, we have a full uh, programme of lessons for students that they can access via Microsoft Teams with that, with that blended approach. That's the end of the Q&A session and obviously we will send a Q&A sheet to those who require it or put it on our website. Thank you very much. Thank you for giving us all those great questions. Um, and if you do have a, a, any other questions, please feel free to contact the Academy uh, and we'll get the answers to you if your question wasn't answered this evening or, or if something that you still kind of you're thinking about that hasn't been been answered this evening, then please do get in touch. So does that bring us to the end of this evening? Mr. Daly, on the running order. It does. So we're going to show our video for guests now, um, Mr. Francis. OK, so I'd just like to take this final opportunity to thank everybody for attending this evening. Um, it would be wonderful to, to see you in person. And when we get the opportunity to have people into the academy, we'll, we'll definitely get get the uh, the opportunity to have tours of during the school day, etc. We love inviting people in and it's it's really heartbreaking for us to not be able to do that at the moment. Um, but we're really looking forward to hopefully seeing you in the future, studying at East League Academy and working with you as both young people and that, that partnership between the school and parents. So thank you for taking the time to see you to listen. And we'll, we'll now play out with our, our brand new promotional video. Um, apologies if it doesn't play perfectly when we tested it um last it it, it didn't per it didn't play in completely smoothly but again we're, we're, we're kind of working with the technology and, and we're, it's a learning curve for us so but we hope you enjoy thank you and good evening East Leaf Academy is a 11 to 18 secondary comprehensive academy located in East Leaf in Nottinghamshire and we are part of the Diverse Academies Multi Academy Trust. East Leaf Academy has a really special feel to it. It's one of those schools that when you step through the door, it just feels like a really nice place to be. We have really high expectations of our young people and we're on a journey with them to make a great school even better. And they're very much part of that journey to help improve their future. I'm in year nine and I'm about to choose my options for when I go into GCSE. My favorite lesson is English because I love reading books and then studying about them afterwards. I love how when we read the books and the author says something but means another thing so we can discover and like dive deeper into what happens there. I love studying at East Leek because it gives all students the opportunity to have an amazing education. I enjoy studying at East Leek because all the teachers are nice and everyone's really supportive. My favourite lesson is computing because you get to do coding and that's got a lot of problem solving in. There is lots of extracurricular activities at East Leek and I'm part of East Leek's Write Club which is creative writing and stories. When I first joined I was quite shy and now that I'm in year 9 I'm a lot more confident. teach that East League are really really helpful and they're always enthusiastic when it comes to work so they run after school clubs which I'm part of and I can always go to my teachers if I need 
any support that's other than academic, so they're really, really kind to us. I love biology, it's one of my favourite lessons because it inspired me to study medicine. I love studying human anatomy and I like finding out how the human body works. As part of the Diverse Academies Trust, we have a really clear sense of vision and mission and values. And our local interpretation of that Easley Academy is to centre that around four core pillars, teamwork, commitment, growth and respect. And we expect those values to be displayed every day by everybody within our community, from students, staff and parents. And we work hard to really focus in on those four core pillars. What I really love about my job is being able to see that development of each individual student through their journey through the school. From seeing them come in slightly nervous on their first day to then when they leave us and they're a well-rounded individual is quite inspirational. I'd say that if you're thinking of coming to East Lake Academy, what you're going to get is really great student and staff working relationships to get the very best out of every young person. And for us, that's really key towards creating a well-rounded student who can go on to be the best possible person they can be.